Professor Carol Peden from the University of Southern California in LA all the way to Auckland. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great actually. I'm enjoying the conference. It's a beautiful venue and um, the social activities have been great so far, so I'm very happy. And I've given my talk, so <laughs> I have my big talk, so I can relax a little bit. Now, that was the presentation on accelerating improvement for higher risk surgical patients. What do you want to accelerate? Um, I think I want to accelerate people's understanding of the group of patients we're talking about and what they can do about it because I think the, that this group of patients are elderly, they're emergency surgery patients, so it can be, it's possible to think what can we do because of the type of patients, but there are things that we can do. Um, we can focus on them, we can measure outcomes, we can look at the whole pathway of care and look for areas where we can actually improve. So what are some of the issues currently that you want to improve? What, what are those issues? Well, I think when you look at the data on these patients, traditionally they haven't always been admitted to a critical care bed postoperatively, despite the fact they are very high risk. Um, the management of sepsis, many of these patients will have a degree of sepsis. Uh, there's a big international campaign to improve sepsis, but this is a group of patients who will be septic, so timely, uh, fast provision of antibiotics. I think many of them are elderly, so a focus on specific challenges in the older patient, frailty, management of dementia, and delirium. There's lots of areas where we could improve. And I think I talked today about how in anesthesia we've made care in the operating theatre very safe, but the problems for these patients will extend out into many days postoperatively. So we have to think about their care in the days following the surgery. You're talking about massive culture shift, uh, processes, systems, the whole thing. Uh, how is it going to come about? Well, I was struck by the speaker last night at the graduation ceremony talking about rowing across the Atlantic for 4,000 miles. And I think if you think about that, it's just too enormous. And I think what I've learned with quality improvement is just get started. Focus on the areas where you think you can achieve change. Find out where you are now and start. Test your ideas. The thing about quality improvement, it is, it's fairly rapid. You have an idea, you maybe want to design a new form for a process in theatre for these patients. You take it down and you try it out with one colleague on one day and you get started and you learn fast from what works and what doesn't work and you build momentum. I think it's also very important uh, to communicate. Uh, if you look at some of the really big quality improvement campaigns, they have been campaigns. There's been, you know, a lot of media about them. People get talking about the message. And in the things I've worked on, we've tried to do that. You know, uh, and celebrate success is another thing. You know, get people talking about it, focus on what works, and then talk about it again and celebrate it. How do you bring the staff along with you when you're trying to implement the change? That's a very good topic and a whole topic in its own right. I think one of the things that we did in the EPOC study, which is the enhanced recovery for perioperative high-risk surgical patients, was to actually get surgeons and anesthetists and intensivists to look at a very, very small set of notes, not, not 50, not 20 audit notes, but maybe five sets of notes, and just look at the key things that they felt should be done for these patients. And often they weren't done very well or done reliably, and that Im immediately engaged the very senior people in thinking, oh, you know, I thought, I thought this happened, but it doesn't. Um, and then there's a whole change, you know, techniques, like focusing on the people that want to work with you. There'll be a whole group of people that won't be engaged in this project. Don't spend time on them. Get your early adopters and your enthusiasts to help you and create that initial momentum so you get to a tipping point. So you're here at the ASM for the next few days. Um, the theme is living on the edge, and I, I think that's you, because aren't you quite famous for driving fast cars? Well, I don't know if I'm very famous, but <laughs> uh, many years ago I managed to make it onto the front page of the Sunday Telegraph in the UK for um, rallying an Aston Martin DB5, and the fact that we were a female team, I was the driver and I had my friend who was a navigator, we had our Aston Martin overalls and um, you know our James Bond t-shirt, so that created a bit of energy. I kept the car for a number of years, but eventually, every time I took it out on the road, it took me closer to the edge because it would do things like stop working in the fast lane of the motorway. So um, I now just, I have a fast Mercedes now, which is very reliable. Yeah, you've got to love that reliability. Tell me about the next few days. You've got another couple of uh, events that you're speaking at. Tell us about those. 
Yes, well, I'm talking about mortality reviews, which I'm very interested in. I think, um, again, another way of improving reliable care is to review patients that die, but look for themes for progress. Not a focus on the individual pathology, but where could asking the question, where could we have done better? Um, so I'm talking about that from a UK perspective. I'm giving the toast on behalf of the guests at the dinner, and I'm participating in the final uh, debate on what my country did for anaesthesia. Now that was a bit of a challenge for me because I trained in Scotland and my family is Scottish. I've lived in England and I've just moved to the US. So I had to clarify which country I was talking about. And I think all of them have a potential, you know, win in there. But I think actually I've got England and that may be the easiest. Are you looking forward to the debate? I am, yeah, I think that'll be fun. Okay, well, uh, Professor Carol Peden, thank you for talking to us. Hope while you're here in Auckland, you manage to find a Ferrari you can take out on the roads as well. Uh, thank you, yes. And I will enjoy not having LA traffic and yeah. six lanes of it.